Welcome to our final part of the Psychoacoustics lecture. This time it's about binaural hearing and particular binaural masking. So far we've talked about monaural hearing all throughout this lecture, but now we want to go the step forward to introducing the binaural cues, which you've already heard about in this very lecture. Now if a sound source comes from the side, then it takes the sound a little bit of time to travel around the head to arrive at the other ear at the contralateral ear and that will introduce a phase disparity at low frequencies and interaural phase difference as well as delay the envelope or the group delay of the sound altogether. On top of it the sound will be attenuated and amplified at certain frequencies and due to the head casting a shadow and the pinnal being directive and there has been a shoulder reflection as well. So creating differences in level or intensity between the two ears which can be picked up by the brain. Now introducing those additional degrees of freedom, those additional cues into masking experiments will make all the difference for explaining what's going on in the real world. So far we talked about the situation of a single tone in a noise and we measured the masking patterns with that. Of course we can do that over headphones with one single ear. But what happens if we now bring the same signal on the other ear? Will it be the same sound? What happens if we introduce a time difference or a level difference or an uncorrelation into the signal? And this is what we're going to look at now. The interesting part happens when we are not going to give the same signal of, on both ears, which is what we call the NO or SO condition, but if we change the signals across the ears so that they are still similar maybe in terms of the tone, uh, but for example, face inverted. So if we change the face of the tone on one of the ears um, to against the other ear, but keep the noise the same. If we now contrast that condition with our standard condition, where we have the same signals in both ears, which we call the SO and NO for zero degrees uh, in the front uh, condition, which gives rise to having similar signals in both ears and contrast that with the phase shifted S pi signals, 180 degrees phase shift, then thresholds will change massively. So the red curve in this uh, graph gives you the threshold uh, that you basically have in monoral conditions, except here it's diodic listening where you might be a tick better, uh, but still pretty very much similar to monoral listening. Now, if you then introduce the phase change in the signal, but keep the noise still diotic, still the same on both ears, then suddenly you'll be able to hear that tone. And we have a massive benefit from having that phase difference, which is equivalent to a time difference um, between the ears. We gain up to 15 decibels in threshold, which is a massive improvement and makes really the tone stand out. And so that you believe me what I'm saying, I also brought this as an audio demonstration to you, which you should listen to over headphones. I first play the tone just regularly as SO and then alternate it with the situation as S pi, so with 180 degrees phase shift. And you hear that this sounds different, even if you listen to it over loudspeakers. But the difference will really kick in with the second demonstration where I play it in the noise. So let's start first with the tone alone. And now I play the tone with the noise. So it's really like an all or nothing. Just changing the face makes us hear that tone and otherwise it's completely masked, we don't hear it. Uh, of course I play it but you cannot hear it, it's below mass threshold. So the beam LDs, the binaural masking level differences really can help us hear sounds in noise quite considerably. 
Now let's look into different conditions here for beam LDs. So we had this NOSO condition, which is uh, the difficult one, um, where you don't have any interval phase differences between the signal and the noise. If we introduce the pi phase shift, uh, in the signal but keep the noise diodic, namely identical on both ears, then we gain up to 15 decibels and it makes us hear us hear out the sound. Now, if we just do the same thing more normally, then the phase, the interval phase doesn't matter and our thresholds are almost like they are in the NOSO condition. And uh, the other condition uh, when we have, would have the noise being just presented on both ears and the tone on only one ear. Um, so we have the tone being monorally and the noise being diodic. That lets us hear that tone quite well actually. And if you listen to your cell phone, uh, you have kind of that situation. So you might have a noise that comes in the fr from the front that might be correlated or at least partially correlated and you have a tone that comes into one ear or your speech comes into one ear only and that makes it uh, relatively well understandable. However, it's not always perfectly correlated and you'll see in a second that's um, not helping you too much. But first introduce the concept of uncorrelated noise. So just take two random noises, um, makes it an uncorrelated noise. We can play a tone into that uncorrelated noise and if that tone is diodic, so basically has the same phase on both ears, no interval phase or time difference, but the noises are, are independent on both ears, then we can also hear the tone very clearly in that noise. So it's contrasting um, the phase relationships. Yeah? So if the noises have random phases because they're uncorrelated, uh, but the tone has a fixed uh, correlated phase, then it's good to hear out that tone. If the tone was phi, pi phase shifted, then that contrast isn't really there in the same way and we benefit up to only three decibels. Now you can go back to your um, situation with the uh, mobile phone. Uh, you of course have a noise that's somewhere between being correlated and uncorrelated, so your benefit uh, will be reduced by that uh, correlation of the noise. This whole thing also extends over to speech understanding. Um, we have benefits in speech understanding that come not only from the phase and time differences that we considered so far, but also from head shadow. So we have both processes, the interval level and uh, timing differences. Uh, but first start off with the diodic conditions. So quite an interesting phenomenon. We just had the NOSO condition where there's a monoral condition and we can do the same thing for speech understanding. So by presenting noise and speech both from the same loudspeaker in front of a listener. So it's basically both of them are more or less diodic signals except that our ears might make them slightly different on both ears. And we gain from that a benefit. So if we compare the monoral signal and then unplug one ear uh, or plug it again. So do exactly that comparison. Then we talk about a binaural redundancy or binaural summation. Uh, sounds get louder by equivalent three to six dB in loudness gain from listening with both ears over one ear. And we also improve our speech understanding by about one dB over headphones or even up to three decibels in the free field. And we measure that in the so-called speech reception threshold. And that's the threshold where we understand 50% of the words or the sentences uh, of the speech in noise, because if there was no noise present, we would probably understand everything unless we're really hearing impaired. Uh, so we need to present some noise. And then we measure the signal to noise ratio, the energy difference between the noise and the signal. And this gives our uh, speech reception threshold. So a negative speech reception threshold means that the speech can be much lower in energy than the noise. Uh, so we can tolerate more noise energy than speech energy. And we gain here an improvement by just adding the ear, the second ear, even though the signals are very similar. Now, if we now move 
the noise to a different location than the speech, we gain additionally. Namely, we gain on top of it from the head shadow and we gain additionally from having the speech in kind of an SO condition and the noise being a bit dissimilar on both ears. So we introduce a slight BMLD type effect into it as well. So that helps us regain some head shadow benefits and the benefit here can be quite pronounced um, by several decibels. We can now introduce some interesting conditions in terms of binaural hearing. We can, for example, plug the ear where the noise is closer. And that means that that ear uh, has a, a, a worse signal to noise ratio than, than the ear that's on the other side of the head by about 10 decibels, even at the higher frequencies, potentially even more. And um, by introducing or by adding that ear, we still get a little bit of a benefit, even though we add the ear with the worse signal to noise ratio. And that's what we call binaural squelch. And it can be about one or two decibels. Of course, that's something you can do over headphones uh, or with uh, deaf people who you give hearing, hearing devices where you can turn on the hearing device or you turn it off. Now let's come to the main benefits. They can be quite pronounced up to uh, 10, 12 decibels if we uh, put no speech and noise on different sites, on different locations around us. Um, we can benefit very strongly from uh, A, the head shadow benefit and B, the BMLD type benefits. And both of them uh, contribute to an improved speech understanding. And luckily, in many natural listening situations, speech and noise don't come from the same location. So we have those binaural benefits. What is always interesting to me is to see that, also in our models, we see that the brain can select the ear on a short time basis where there is a better signal to noise ratio and it can sort of ignore interference from the other ear. So it can basically listen to one ear at a time and switch between ears wherever there is the best information. And I find this a very interesting feature um, that the brain itself knows what is the best signal just to begin with. So here in this situation, we have a strong head shadow, so the noise is attenuated by the head and we have a better signal to noise ratio on the ear towards the speech. And uh, the brain can pick that ear and, and go by the better information on that ear and be much more, uh, much less impaired by the noise from the side. So that can really give a benefit up to more than 10 decibels as, uh, SRT. That leads me to sum up our short excursion into binaural unmasking. Um, there are strong benefits from having two ears, benefits that make in masking level differences and mass thresholds up to 15 decibels when we introduce a pi phase shift into the signal, uh, but keep a noise that is identical on both ears. In many other situations, we also gain Mm, strong benefits from having different phases in the target and in the noise situation. Binaural unmasking is not only there for single tones, we also benefit strongly for speech understanding benefits up to 10, 12, 13 decibels are possible from having uh, noise and speech and different locations. Uh, these are based on head shadow and also on BMLD, particularly if you're a bit in diffuse listening situations in the rooms. That leads me to the end of the whole course on psychoacoustics. I hope you got a flavor of uh, psychoacoustics not being uh, only the physical domain, but also understanding how the physical cues are interpreted by the brain, are used by the brain for our benefit, which is very strongly visible here in binaural hearing, where we strongly gain from having slight phase shifts in the signals where the brain does amazing features uh, of uh, using those phase differences to improve our ability to hear in our everyday noisy environments. I hope this fascinates you as much as it does me and I hope you're interested more in psychoacoustics. Have a look past our web pages www.aip.ei.tum.de if you want to have more information about us. Thanks very much and 
All the best for your exams and for psychoacoustics and listening in your everyday world. Bye-bye.